So the waking up the hands as the base is, as I said that before, the sensory inflow by your motor, motor reaction connected to your feeling center. So this is what we have done, what the entire core issue is. And this is, this is your base. Yeah? So your responsibility for your feelings and what's going on in your body. So that when you with your partner and you engage with your partner on that point, that um, you need to have that both in place. So if just only one person has that in place and the other person doesn't and you engage and this is not feeling based, it's not based on sensations when there's an agenda or what you said, Robert, the indirect route, when we just want something from the other person, it won't work. It only works when both people have that embodied and when both people have that as a foundation. So, and what that needs is actually a mutual agreement with each other that, and I do that, for example, um, with my partner, I shared that last, um, last week about the relationship agreement. So it's just, I have given permission to my partner that she can feel me with any part of her body, on any part of my body, whenever, however she wants. Just reach it out, do, do me for yourself. I take care of my limits, same for her. Um, I ask her, do I have the same permission? Can I feel you? So, so that there's a mutual agreement about that I have the, the permission to do that, she has the permission. So that, that we are both responsible for our needs and we are both responsible for our limits. So that, when, and, and we have shared that the last time. So when you bring that together into this engagement part, being with another person, so when your base and their base come together, uh, it's super simple. It's either your action and it's for you or it is your action and it's for them. And what the difference is, is not what feels good. What the difference is, is what's your agreement that you're having. So if you do something for them and stop feeling yourself and you do it for them because you want to get this response, then you literally lose the connection for yourself. So the, the core is be capable of feeling yourself on somebody else without the meaning or the story. And then, of course, um, what if it is for both of us? Yes, that's possible. It's that place of the apex, this interpersonal space where literally lovemaking and relationship is happening. But before that can happen, both have to have that in place. And otherwise, it's just spiritual bypassing. So when people can't feel themselves. So, and I said that again, is either your action or it is their action in an engagement, in the engagement zone. And can it be both action? Yes, yeah, sure. This is this part of the apex. The top of the, of the development is when both doing and when both feeling, then it's for both and both are in action. Lovemaking, as I said, connection, feeling. Um, yeah, the, the beauty of touch and connection. So in the engagement zones, and I had described that, you have either the permission line, so where they ask the other person for permission, or you have the agreement and both of them creating consent. So consent means either permission or you have agreement. Either you do your action for yourself or you want the other person doing an action for you, then, that's, then permission doesn't fit, then it needs an agreement. That's a different thing. So that's, as I said, it's either uh, your action, their action, and then you can define who that is and um, um, who, who it is for. So, so that you literally can, with these two questions, can I or can you define the level of consent? So um, that you have, it's like a map or a picture in the engagement, but you don't want to live your life like that. Please don't, don't live your life like that. This is just to learn to engage with other people and become aware where is an agreement missing and where am I not in alignment with what I actually want? Where does the other person has an agenda touching me and want something out of me that I'm not willing to give? And where do I set, where, where, where am I setting not, not my limits? Where do I set, say not now? 
So then we have been going through why is it difficult for you to ask for what you want these two questions. We went through that. And what are you doing instead to get your needs met? So where we said, yeah, we're judging other, we're avoiding. So we had we had all these um, different topics um, where we talked about. Then why is it difficult for you um, to say no? And then if you can't say no, what are you doing instead of saying no? And we have all different strategies and different ways of avoiding so so the shadows in this structure is is really simple and really easy and the way how you want to use it is completely utterly up to you i use it as a map and this map is something that is um, obvious to point out these shadows and they're not wrong or bad they're just part of our personality structure how we engage to get our needs met from early age before we could speak. So you have the, the first shadow here that is, the, is um, well known as rape, stealing, perpetratory, any kind of abuse, violation and war. So whereas an action happening for another person's benefit without having permission. It's a dynamic and everybody knows that dynamic. I know it, I've done it, it has happened to me, so I know the dynamics. Then you have the other shadow that is, if you don't have an agreement and you want somebody else is doing something for you, so you want to have an action towards you without asking the other person for that action. And one of the main shadows is expectations. So we're expecting the other person to know if you would love me, you would do it. If you could just like lip read my desires, then you could actually provide what I need. So entitlement and exploitation are typical shadows or the slave owner or the lazy guy letting other people do because they can't move their body. They don't want to move their body. The freeloader, just like people who constantly want to have the free stuff and expecting other people to feed them constantly. So it's a typical shadow of, um, I call it as well, the uh, pillow princess and pillow queen, starfish in the bed. I'm ready to be served and do the right thing. <laughs> um, if you can't say no, and what are you doing instead is the, is the opposite shadow that goes into the shadow of no permission, not, not having permission is the shadow of not giving permission. So if we can't say no, and if we don't expressing our limits, if we don't give permission or somebody's doing it and we have not spoken into that, the typical shadow in there is the victim and enduring. So going along with stuff and letting it happen and neurologically shutting down and becoming passive and creating trauma in the body. The, the typical thing is we have been all touched against our will before we could speak. We have learned that the adults doing stuff to us that they want to do. And we learn to adapt ourselves by trying to like what we don't like instead of changing what is happening. And this is, this is, a, this is a, the, 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 common, the, the common way of um, a victim mentality in our um, modern culture and society where we want other people to take care of us because they have treated or society have treated us bad. Now we deserve another action towards us. So it just creates structure of, of behavior. It creates structure of belief systems and who we are as individual humans. Then the last shadow uh, dynamic is the shadow of we going into an action without having a request so that we literally doing something that the other person has not been asked for or doesn't want. So it's the, in, there's an entire, an entire healing industry is based on that. The wounded healer is there. I've been working over 10 years with hundreds of mothers who were taking care of their children. They're, they're burned out. They have given everything and neurologically, they they can't stop giving what they need to learn is only doing something when somebody's requesting it 
and learn to receive utterly. Stop giving for a year. Don't do anything to anybody if they don't ask you. Nobody's asking you, don't do anything. <laughs> So there is the gift to get is another shadow in there. People giving something because they want something. Because Jesus died for you on the cross. So we are guilty. We have to we have to we have to carry this burden on our shoulders. He was dying for us. <laughs> so so and, and therefore we have to give something even if we don't want to, because otherwise we burn in hell. Um, the do-gooder or the pleaser as well, the nice guy, who's just like people who are not asking for themselves. They're constantly wanting other people to be happy, to feel good about themselves. Um, I've seen that specifically in America. The entire gift to get and the tip mentality. People are really incredibly friendly because they want something. The entire tip mentality in America is based on this shadow. Um, nice guy, nice girl. When I work with them, people say just like, yeah, but now, so this is just horrifying. What am I doing with that? Okay, you don't have to work on your shadows. You don't have to heal anything. There's nothing broken in you. You don't have to be fixed. There's nothing that needs to be repaired. Nobody of you has to go and do therapy. Nobody of you have to change or be a better version of yourself. None of this, you completely, utterly forget that and chop that out of the window. All you do is you just start letting your skin do the work and ask your partner the simple question or person you want to connect with, hey, may I feel you? That's all you need to do. When you do that, your neurological state will shift automatically and you will come to the edges within yourself where you feel uncomfortable. And then you slow it a little bit down. Okay, I think I need to feel a little less here because I'm on my ceiling, I'm, I'm on, on the edge. That was my little uh, thing for you. We have about two, three minutes for question or anything and then we do another hand thing. Let's do two minutes. It's already 11. If you have to go, please run. Um, Get relaxed. And just sink straight back. So that, that was a pretty deep mental state where we just dropped in. I love and acknowledge this mental states. So cognitive deepening is something very powerful that allows us um, to make sense on a rational level with the, the world. But now my invitation is to come straight back to the body and to the feeling sense of your skin. That doesn't mean anything. Ah, and while my nervous system is sinking in, I'm aware of about one or the other, yes, but <laughs> coming from the other side of the screen. So just if you have a yes, but that's okay, just acknowledge it and feel it in your hands, feel the sensation. Ah, then slow your hands down till they stop. Hmm. Let this experience sink in and connect it with this cognitive mental uh, input that you just got a while ago. So 
that the mind can be included and add part of it as much as possible. Okay, so I wish you a beautiful Saturday. Uh, two things. There is um, on today, I just posted that on my wall, Sana and I will sharing our four relationship agreements. They are based on this dynamics that we just share here. And on the coming Wednesday, I share uh, at six o'clock Stockholm time, a webinar on the hands or the pleasure of uh, on the hands and sacred sexuality, how that is implanted in being with a lover and how to feel each other and you know the entire shebang. So thank you for joining today. Have a beautiful day and see you next time. <laughs>